the fourth and final session in our uh, four-part series on the ABCs of EPDs uh, is carcass traits. Obviously at the end of the performance chain and uh, we'll end with with the traits that uh, make us the most money on the rail and decide how to use those in a selection program. Now, the traits involved hot carcass weight, ribeye area, rib fat thickness, and marbling. Now, there are a few others that can help us along the way, but basically the traits that we measure on the rail uh, are the same ones that we measure from an EPD standpoint. Uh, it's important to understand that uh, we get carcass trait information from two different sources. We get it from the carcass itself via uh, tag transfer and data collection on the rail, uh, but we can also get it from ultrasound, live animal ultrasound uh, on bulls, heifers, steers, uh, anything to market uh, that that way as well. Uh, so it's important to, uh, to keep in mind that we have lots of information contributing to carcass data uh, from the feedlot sector, uh, but very little for grass-fed programs. Uh, so these carcass traits need to be used uh, with, some, with a bit of caution. Uh, if you're in a grass-fed or a grass-finished type of program, uh, you might not get the same results uh, using carcass uh, EPDs in that environment that you would in a feedlot setting. Uh, the first trait is hot carcass weight. Uh, it's also abbreviated as either CW or HCW, uh, and it is expressed in pounds of carcass, not in necessarily pounds of live weight uh, when they head to harvest. Uh, in some breeds, it is a separate evaluation from the growth traits like yearling weight, so it is derived from the carcass data results only. Uh, the individual performance data, uh, is, as far as yearling weights, aren't necessarily used to help determine this carcass uh, trait. It is an indicator of both muscling and yield. Obviously, any, any weight trait would, uh, would indicate uh, an increase in muscling or, or the amount of muscling or yield. Uh, and it is used in dollar values and profit indexes, as you might imagine, as a driver for profitability in the feedlot. Ribeye area. Uh, it's expressed in square inches. Um, it's used in as uh, its use, uses from carcass and ultrasound. Uh, it's important to understand that ultrasound is only given 70% of the carcass value that a carcass ribeye area is given. Uh, basically the genetic correlation of ultrasound ribeye area to carcass is about 0.7 so they use that figure uh, in your genetic evaluation. It is not adjusted for weight so it has a very positive correlation with the growth traits. Uh, bigger cattle have bigger ribeyes, uh, so over selection for ribeye area might also cause some increases in cow size uh, or just growth period. It also has some antagonisms. As we all know, uh, cattle with large ribeyes have a harder time of, of grading choice, uh, so larger ribeye EPD would have an antagonism to marbling EPD. And then also to calving ease direct. Uh, ribeye area you think of, of an expansive ribeye area, that's a big topped individual that probably has a lot of base width and with that comes from maybe some shoulder width uh, and some, some larger size at birth. So there can be some problems from that aspect. Uh, and this is uh, how we derive some of our, our data online with online grading capabilities. The lower right picture uh, depicts how we assess ribeye area in an online camera. Uh, that blue portion is where the fat thickness would be measured, and that's where we'll go next. Uh, it is expressed in inches, uh, so you see very small numbers here. There's very little breed average movement over time. We haven't changed a lot of the, our abilities to fatten animals and uh, the variation that, that happens within a breed, so there's not a lot of movement there on a breed average basis. It can be a good indicator of female fleshing ability, uh, but it's important to keep in mind that that grain diets and efficiency on grass can be quite different. Again, fat thickness EPD is influenced by carcass data and ultrasound data, and it's adjusted for days of age, so it is adjusted to a constant. And now marbling. Uh, it is expressed in USDA marbling score units. Uh, which is important as far as how we collect carcass data because USDA quality grades, uh, the letter grades as I'll call them, and prime choice and select uh, cannot be used because they're not numeric. Uh, so you see 
uh, the three grades down there at the bottom right, prime choice select in that order, left to right. So we have to convert those to numeric values. Uh, that can happen either using online camera grading, uh, which does it automatically, or a tag transfer data collector uh, can do those numbers for them. Uh, ultrasound, the conversion, uh, would be percent intramuscular fat. Uh, so it's, it's taken into account, uh, used again at a genetic correlation of 0.7 and, and quote unquote converted to marbling score. Uh, they use the, a different scale for fat. Uh, it is an actual measure of the percentage of fat in a ribeye uh, when we use a process called ether extract and uh, determine the amount of fat in the sample within that muscle. Uh, again, it is adjusted for days of age as well. There are a few others. Uh, yield grade EPD, it might surprise uh, quite a few of you that yield grade EPD is nothing more than the math problem that we use to assess yield grade applied to the EPDs that, uh, that are in the equation. Uh, so as you can see there, it's just 2.5 uh, plus 2.5 times fat, uh, 0.0038 times the hot carcass weight EPD, and then minus uh, 0.32 times your ribeye area EPD. So it is expressed as a numeric yield grade. Uh, percent retail product is another one, very similar calculation, but it is expressed in percentage points. Um, used again to, to assess the ability of a, of a carcass to yield. And some of the dollar value indexes will add growth into the grid pricing that uh, is current and those will change over time so the dollar indexes will adjust their weightings over time as well. Uh, so it's important to know that uh, it takes longer to quote unquote prove a bull uh, via ultrasound only. It's really good to have some actual carcass data in there to move those EPDs to higher accuracies quicker. Dollar value indexes uh, will incorporate some other sources of profit uh, and use some market conditions to help uh, producers make more money or buy bulls that are more current to the market. And uh, of course better EID programs in the future could really impact the amount of data feedback that we get. Uh, online camera grading has been great. Uh, we need to work ways to uh, figure out how to get that data back to the cow-calf producer. Uh, so hopefully this has been a, a good summary of the carcass traits that we use uh, in a selection program.